Hello, my beautiful family, and welcome back to the channel. I missed you guys. I'm so glad to be back here. Last night's tell all was so amazing. Let's get into this disaster. Thais and Patrick are the first ones to arrive at the house. Oh, you guys, I didn't know that the house was gonna be in the first episode. I thought it was gonna come up like in episode three or something. I got an egg on my teeth. Gosh. <laughs> okay? Okay. So it's a huge decked out mansion. Patrick tells Thais that he's kind of nervous about the fighting that could ensue. And he doesn't care if anyone talks crap about him, but if they're gonna talk crap about Thais, they're in for it. And Patrick, you better hold on because Thais loves to start drama. Then Jasmine and Gina show up. She is already pissed because there is snow outside. She's not looking forward to meeting anyone. Then they roll up to the house and she's like, oh, this is my dream house. And she's wearing her stupid sash, you guys. Jasmine reminded me of like when I was in Little League and I would get a trophy. I'd like bring it into school the next day for the baseball team. I don't know why she's wearing the stash. How embarrassing. They enter the home and Thais and Patrick run down to greet them. They're so excited. Then Thais sees her sash and she's like, oh, I want a beauty pageant a long time ago. Oh my gosh. Do you wear a mask? Yeah, yeah, I did. I'm not surprised. You're so beautiful. Oh, thank yes, you. Yes, I know. Yeah, I did. I used to do. You know that that had to sting. Jasmine had to pay for her sash. And then Thais wins it before anyone even knows about 90 Day Fiance. It's just crazy. Then Jasmine learned that Thais and Patrick had the first pick of the bedrooms. Yeah, no, I'm honestly disappointed. What Thais and Patrick give it to the rest of us who have a miserable marriage and live in a miserable place. So Jasmine goes out and picks the room, then tells Gino he has to pick out his own bedroom because right now they aren't sleeping together. What you're saying though is that the only way I can sleep in the bed with you is that we have sex. Yes, that's an ultimatum. And, and to me, I don't agree with that. Did you know there's a verse in the Bible that says you should not withhold sex from your partner, man or woman? It's not fair, frankly. Gino is lucky that anyone wants to touch him at all. Then Emily and Kobe, Ashley and Manuel show up at the same time. Emily is huge. I don't know how far along she is, but that is going to be a big baby. Ashley looks good. It looks like she lost more weight. It also looks like Jasmine is thinner and her hair is thinner, but if she's been living miserable with Gino for months, it's no surprise. By the way, I'm not standing up for Jasmine, okay? They both suck. The girls start massaging Emily's feet and Gino tells the fellas that him and Jasmine aren't getting along. They don't even sleep in the same room anymore and they've only been married one year. <gasps> That's like the easiest year. Then Liz shows up alone. All the girls are so excited to see her and so happy that she came alone. Jasmine doesn't even stand up to hug Liz. Good to see you, my girl. Hi, hi. Jasmine tells her that she looks great and Ed is a terrible person. Liz says she isn't sure how she's gonna feel when she sees him. It's been six months and I think she's still hurting. As Ed pulls up, Patrick tells Liz he's surprised they aren't together and Liz asks for a double shot. Then Ed walks in looking as round as ever and he goes right over to Liz and he asks her for a hug. My bro. Bro. Un abracito, algo, eh. Un besito. Yay. Why is this clown crying? Kick him out right now, Patrick. Pull his ass aside and lay down the law, okay? None of this tomfoolery. He goes in to hug Jasmine and she's like, no, I don't like touching people. And Patrick's like, what? She hugged me. Yeah. I don't like hugging. Okay, all right, good, I don't either. I yes. She gave me a hug. Oh my gosh, the pettiness has already started. <laughs> and nobody likes Ed. They're all standing around the island and nobody is like making room for him to come in. And then I don't know why, but later on he's alone with Liz, and that's when he tells her that he misses her. I miss you. I do miss you. I'm sorry. Don't do that. You are such a piece of crap. And Liz, you are so dumb. Why are you allowing yourself to be alone with this guy? Set some boundaries. Respect yourself. Love yourself. I'm here to support you. I want you to know that. I want the world to see a different Ed in my defense. Just stop. <laughs> this isn't good enough. This was their normal when they were together. Anyways, Lauren and Alexi show up. I haven't been covering these two because it's been so boring, but I was so annoyed with Lauren in the last episode telling Alexi that she wanted her boobs redone. And not only that, but another fat transfer. 
a huge waste of your time and money, okay? Just get implants. Thank me later. Rob and Sophie show up. They both look miserable. Then she tells Rob she wants him to go in alone because she has anxiety. I am so sick of hearing about your anxiety, Sophie. Okay, call your mom. She'll get you some Xanax and you can shut up. She finally comes in and is hanging out with the dudes. I love how she acts so shy and nervous. In the meantime, she's shaking it on OnlyFans. Then they tell the dudes that their relationship is kind of rocky and they're still not having intercourse. A producer steps out to tell the gang that Angela and Michael will not be coming tonight. I definitely believe Angela made the decision not to come. Like, I don't think she wants anybody to meet Michael. It's a new day, first day of the tell-all, and Jasmine walks in looking homeless. Her and Gino got into a huge fight that morning because Jasmine wouldn't let him come in to change. I didn't feel comfortable getting undressed in front of him. She's yelling and screaming at me at the top of her lungs. And it started that argument. Pulling my clothes out of my suitcase and throwing them on the ground. So at this point, everyone thinks that Angela has been intentionally hiding Michael so that nobody could hear his side of the story. And they were right. Is it because of Angela? Yeah, what's the truth? Was well, that because y'all were arguing? I stand yeah. no between us. It's private, you know? I understand. Angela comes walking up looking rough. This woman ages a decade like every month. As soon as she sits down, guess who comes in to check on her? I don't want to go for him to get behind my back and be, oh, he's such a great guy and Angela's a crazy bitch. No. Ding, ding, ding. Everyone was right. It's insane how outrightly abusive she is. She is so aggressive. There is no doubt in my mind that she would sm I swear that's my heart. I wish I never brought him here. He's making a fool out of me. He's making a... Oh, wow. Okay. Then he goes and sits next to Liz. I really think it's because she is the only person willing to tolerate him besides Angela, and she's getting her makeup did, so Liz is the next pick. Jasmine is in this Disney princess dress, and I love her dress. I love it. I think it's gorgeous. I think she looks gorgeous in it. I wish her boobs weren't so pornographic, but mm. Angela comes stomping up, dressed as reserved as anyone has ever seen her. Why are you sitting in here? Because, uh... Because why? Do I make my self clear? She's telling him he isn't allowed to be in there because he can't be within her sight line. Then maybe, Angela, you should get up and leave, you wicked old hag. Okay, I'm in editing now and I have to make a correction. Angela told Michael he was not allowed to leave her eyesight. So the fact that he was in that room without her is why he's in trouble. I apologize. I said, and I don't mean to be rude, guys, you don't get out my sight. Do I make my self clear? Just please get her off of our screens. How has Michael not died from a heart attack or cortisol overload? He probably blacks out on like a daily basis so he can, his mind can protect him from all of the abuse. I have time to make these people think I'm the bad one, no more. Of course not. He no, really no, didn't no. say anything bad. Yeah, I, he's not gonna do the nice guy to y'all in front of me no more. Oh my gosh, and never mind, never mind. Rob is like, hey, just let him talk. If he's a liar, he'll expose himself. He didn't say that part, I added that part. Angela stands up and demands Michael tell everyone what he did. And everyone is feeling so bad for him. You got all these people out there in the goddamn world thinking I'm a bitch and I'm a good hearted mother If this is kind, can you imagine going to church and half the congregation <laughs> The producer steps out and she says they need to go to set and Angela just walks away. Tell him he's this, he's that, he's a piece of shit, he's all these things, and then get mad at him because he's making you look bad. You're really making yourself look horrible. Yeah, everyone can see it. But finally, Sean walks out and informs us that Nicole and Mahmoud won't be here. Why? One couple who won't be participating in this tell-all is Nicole and Mahmoud. We do wish them the best as... I need to know what happened. I need those little loose ends tied together, nice and tight. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Sean goes around asking everyone to tease their question. Jasmine, did you and Gino sleep in the same room last night? Oh no, I'm shocked. Rob and Sophie, how about you? Oh no, not you either. <laughs> I didn't know that. Michael, how does it feel to be here in the flesh and are you nervous? Um, I'm ready for it and I will defend it to the best of my That's knowledge. That's what he does best. He'll lie oh, and he'll take that lie to the grave. I'll... She doesn't let him say a single 
thing without either cutting him off or having the last word. Liz, how about you? No, we didn't sleep in the same room. Thais and Patrick, how is your knee doing, Patrick? Really, Sean, how is his knee? Okay, let's just get the show on the road. Fast forwarding. Okay, first, all eyes on Ed and Liz. Ed is quick to tell us that he is back in church. Oh, you're back? When did you leave? What church did you go to? Are you a member? Do you tithe? Are you one of those Christians that can speak in tongues? You were on a dating app within one month of me leaving. Ashley's like, um, you just said you weren't dating. Why are you on a dating app? And he just deflects. Then Sean throws up the scene of Liz telling the audience about Ed calling off the wedding. Liz tells the cast how that night played out and Ed is like, you are such a liar, Liz. Or you're such a liar, Liz. Then he tells everybody that for the last six months, he has been hiding her temper from everyone. I want you guys to remember six months he's been hiding it. All I hear you doing is projecting everything onto Liz. I can't change who you are. You did this. You have a temper. You this. It's like, do you know why I dumped her 16 times? Because of her temper. So the first breakup was because of her temper, but you've been hiding it for six months? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, you're an idiot. Nobody's buying it. I think Liz was so relieved to see the cast jumping on Ed because she keeps on smiling. She looks pretty smug. Can you imagine the level of pain and trauma you caused her by that action alone? And he keeps making this face. I hate this face. He doesn't have any cards left to play. Everyone is calling him out left and right. Actually, at this point in the show, it was mostly the women. They replay the scene of Liz and her mom cleaning up the apartment, and then it cuts to them in a scene together, and Ed is roasting her, and then she says, Go back to your trashy friends and be a bartender for the rest of your life. He's got a small penis. There we go. Oh, Ooh, get it, girl. Just when you think it can't get any better, Liz's mother comes out to rip Ed a new one. His ego, his demons kept getting in the way. Sean is like, is it true that she has a temper? And mom says occasionally she does, but Ed is her biggest trigger ever and he treats her like a punching bag. You did tell me she had a really bad temper. Don't you dare sit there and lie. We said I this. I did not say that. Lauren tells him he doesn't know how to talk to women and he goes, wow, do you think it was okay that she said I have a small penis? Oh my gosh, Ed, I don't wanna know about your penis. Then Angela says she knows deep down Liz is still in love with Ed. Liz starts getting teary-eyed and says she did have real love for Ed. Then Sean asks Liz if she has found someone special and she's like, <laughs> Yes, I have, and he told me that I should use this time to get all of the closure that I need so I can heal and move on with my life. Then Jason comes walking onto the stage. He kisses her and wipes away her tears. Sean asks him how he feels after hearing them go at it while he was backstage. After today, you're in the past. We're gonna move forward. Starting today, you will never disrespect her again. Otherwise, you're gonna have to deal with me. It's like, well, good luck, Jason, good luck. Sean's like, does she have a fiery temper? And he goes, no, we've had a few arguments and we deal with it like adults. No, you need to be honest with yourself or you'll end up like me. Then Sean asks them if their intimacy is any better than it was with Ed. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is too embarrassing. That is the lowest blow for a man. But honestly, Ed deserves it. Does Jason have a bigger <laughs> penis? Oh my God. Tell us, girl. Oh, come on, girl. <laughs> I've never faked it once. Okay, yeah. Sean was about to wrap it up and Liz's mom's like, wait, I need to say one more thing. She looks over at Ed and he's like, you are going to purgatory hell. I do not like you, but I do not hate you. I, I pity you. I really do. That's okay. It was awesome. Then we move on to Gino and Jasmine. What is the status of your marriage? I still love Gino. I'm not quite sure about he is still loving me. Uh, yes, I do. I don't feel love. He controls everything. My schedule, my money, I still can't drive. She tells us that she has begged him to take her to the DMV so that she can take the test and he refuses, which he adamantly denies. And I think he is absolutely lying. Have you filed for Jasmine's adjustment of status yet? I did file for her permanent residency. 
He says he files it and Jasmine is like, who cares? It took seven months. And then everyone is like, actually that paperwork is a lot of work. I don't understand why she didn't offer to do some of it herself. Like if she sees Gino just sitting there doing nothing, why not just hop on the computer and work on it? Apparently she is so educated and well-read, she could have done in a week, right Jasmine? Gino's cousins come out and the first thing he says is that Jasmine communicates really well and Gino is shaking his head. You know, she does communicate well. Um, why are you shaking your head no, Gino? Yeah, I don't agree with that. <laughs> what, why, why, why don't you agree? Sean asks Gino's cousins if he seems controlling in their opinion and the girl says he doesn't really offer to do much for her, which isn't great, but that doesn't answer the question. Then they start getting into all the stupid drama about him driving her to the gym. He's like, yeah, I offered, but she would rather take an Uber. And Jasmine's like, yeah, because if you even lift a finger from me, you hold it over my head for the rest of the day and you expect certain things in return. Gino, just forget about the start from today. Just forget about the past, start from today. You're shaking your head now. Yeah, no way. <sighs> of course, Sean has to ask how long it's been since they've been intimate, and Jasmine says eight months. His cousin and Patrick are like, dude, just do it. Even make up sex, do something. Bro, just it's, bang your wife. It's wearing me out. No, because no, I mean, just, I've, just I've already it. tried that in the beginning, okay, and that didn't work. It's about power. It is 100% about power. It's one of those things he can hold against her to keep her behaving. And I don't like Jasmine, but I'll say it again. It's not fair, it's not right to use sex as a weapon against your husband or wife, period. She has a problem no, with me okay, seeing I... him naked. No, I don't mind that. I have never seen you completely naked, you know, never. She explains that she has seen him in his underwear, but after that, he wants the lights off. They've never showered or bathed together, except for that time she peed on him, but he probably still had his shorts on, I don't know. Rob chimes in and says he understands that Gino probably feels a little bit emasculated, but he needs to forgive her and move on. Maybe you trigger something and, and it's a vicious circle. And not that I wanna blame that, Jasmine, but, but all the time she starts the fights with me, okay? Then it cuts to a flashback where they're fighting and Jasmine tells Gino his core problem is his addiction to pornography. Sean asks Jasmine how often she has caught Gino and Jasmine says more often than I would like, which means probably two or three. She says the last time she left the house and came back, what she caught him doing was shocking. And then she demands that he tell everyone what he had looked up. Of course, he doesn't wanna say, but Jasmine does. Before me, he had like sugar baby side chick yeah, yes and he was looking at her porn videos i thought it was going to be something way worse but that's how the episode ends in the next episode hopefully we'll see angela and michael go at it kobe and emily will have their turn and another fight breaks out with ed hey ed i think you are a bully i think you are not nice okay. to people you are the lowest of the low Michael and Angela head to the mansion to enjoy each other's company. I Did said no opinion. You tell my Ugh. I, I said no opinion. So what the Just run, Michael. Thank you so much for watching till the end, you guys. And I want to report that my trip to Panama, Florida was amazing. It was incredible. If you guys can go, you need to go. The water is so warm and the sand is so soft. Oh, it was awesome. A much needed vacation. <sighs> and then the kids are gonna be starting school in a couple days. So I wanna say hello and thank you to all of my amazing members. I love you guys and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.